In this game we will see an amazing kingside attack which all began with a brilliant sacrifice in the centre. Here are the players. With the white pieces is Austrian GM David Schengelier, FIDE rating 25-43, the third best player in Austria. He is 40 years old. With the black pieces is Richard Report, FIDE rating 27-59, he is the top Hungarian GM. He is 24 years old. Richard is known for his creative style. Another top player known for their creativity is Daniel Dubov, who has worked with Magnus Carlsen. This game took place in round one of the Austrian Bundesliga. Here is the table for the world's top players. At the moment, Richard is the 13th best player in the world. David Schengelia has white, Richard Rapport has black. The game began d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, c takes d5. E takes d5, bishop g5, c6, e3, and the first surprise for me, bishop d6. A normal move is to play bishop e7 just to break the pin on the queen. But Richard Report plays bishop d6. Having looked at the chess24 database, top players who have played this include Carlsen and Kramnik. Because the truth is, how do you deal with this pressure? Well, let's have a look. Bishop d3, castle, queen c2. Nice move. Not only does it get the queen out, queen and bishop form a nice battery. If it's white's move now, bishop takes h7 is a threat. So if you play this, check. You can't take because bishop takes the queen. That's why h6 was played. Bishop h4 by Schengelier. I have a feeling if Richard was white or a very creative player like Hobava or Simon Williams, they would play h4. I don't know if it works, but I just want to show you an opening trap. After h4, if you take and then take, the best move is knight e4. So then you try and trade this bishop off, or else white's attack is actually too dangerous. So for example, if this happened, this looks pretty crazy. White actually has two pawns for the piece. You can't play g6 because, oops, even though <laughs> black might have this incredible move, queen a5, check the king moves, and then queen g5. So maybe black actually finds a way out. However, the idea, the whole point of this is after take, take, if you play a move like knight e8, this loses immediately, at least to checkmate in three moves. Bishop h7, check. King h8, and then you just make sure the bishop doesn't exist anymore. You need the queen to get to the h7 square. So you play bishop g8, check. King takes, queen h7 is mate. So that's how you win pretty quickly. Schengelia played a sensible move, bishop back to h4, rook e8, knight f3. Another way to play this is knight e2, then castle. Knight f3 played, bishop e6. So far so good from both players. Very normal looking position where there are no clear pawn breaks at the moment. And by clear I mean... Does white really want to go e4 at the moment? Does black really want to go c5 at the moment? Well, let's see. Things change in two moves. Knight e5. This move looks good. You're just putting a knight in the middle, and then you can castle. Ideally, you want f4, and then you can support your knight with two pawns. Rapport takes his chance and plays c5, breaking up the structure. You can't take this because your knight is hanging. C5, things change straight away. Castle, knight c6. This knight move puts pressure in the center, but it also puts a question to that knight. Schengelia now takes the knight. Take, take. Bishop h7, check. Just displacing, reports king, and then playing bishop f5. This is a really cool moment, because black can actually use a really nice tactic just to get out of this pin. Now's your chance to pause the video or let the timer run. Can you find a nice way for black just to get out of this pin? The move is queen d7. But first, black just took in the center. Take, take, then queen d7. You can't play bishop takes f6 because black will play bishop takes f5 attacking the queen. After queen d7, bishop d3. Rapport develops his attack very quickly. Knight h5, ideas of playing knight f4, but also g5, f5, trying to trap this bishop. Knight a4, 
Black's knight goes to d h, white's knight also goes to d h. The point of knight a4 is to put it on c5, because this is a nice outpost for the knight. f5, great move, because it stops white playing knight c5. He can't do it at the moment, because you take. And if you take with the queen, or the pawn, g5, you trap the bishop. Knight a4, f5, white now played queen d1. White spent 15 minutes on this move, and rightly so. It's never a move you want to make because you're putting your queen back on its starting square. Queen d1 was chosen by Schengelier. Another option was bishop e2, which also looks like a negative move because you're retreating your piece, but maybe this was best. After knight f4, put the bishop on f3, and after g5, put the bishop on g3. Two bishops in front of your king. It cannot be a bad thing. Then white can play from here. Put a rook on e1, put the knight on c5. Black can continue to get space on this side of the board. The game goes on. Queen d1 played by white, bishop f7. Great move. Defending the knight, because then the threat of g5, f4 still exists. Uh, not there, f4. Trapping the bishop. Report retreats with bishop f7, queen to f3. The following move is the reason I wanted to go through this game. It's so instructive, Black's next move. It's really about just full central control leading to a kingside attack. I love how creative Rapport is. Rook e4, here we go. Just putting a rook right in the middle. Bishop takes. Take with a d-pawn. Notice when this capture is made, it is now 4 against 3 on the kingside. This bishop on h4 is trapped, and this bishop can come in the game. So amazing idea from Rapport. Queen e3, queen c7. Queen and bishop line up facing the white king. Watch how every move from now on, black just builds his attack. He's just building on his initiative. Notice it's quite funny because white has a knight on a4 and a bishop on h4. Two minor pieces on the rim. Doing nothing, they're both out of the game. It really was a good idea for Rapport to sack in the middle because they're two minor pieces doing nothing. Queen c7, g3 played. Can't play bishop g3, f4, g3. At the moment, Rapport doesn't want to go g5 because take, take, take. White actually gets a few pawns for it, and there's now a bit of this coordination among the attacking pieces. I think black is still better, but you want to play a game with a lot of control. And that's exactly what Rapport does. After g3, bishop c4 played just to attack the rook. Black now swings the queen over after rook c1, queen f7. By the way, a call continuation is after g3, rook g8. Because g5 is impossible at the moment, so you get your rook in the game, and then g5. You really are trapping the bishop. Richard goes for bishop c4, rook c1, queen f7. And everything is just building. Richard is really playing with the initiative. Queen defends bishop, the bishop can always drop back. G5, F4 is coming. The rook can come to G8 or to E8. Meanwhile, two minor pieces doing nothing. And also a rook in the corner doing nothing. And a queen in the middle, which is really a passive piece. Queen F7 played, F4. Schengelier is trying to lock up the kingside. F4 would have been a great move. Unfortunately, the en passant rule exists. So Richard just opens it up with E takes F3. Queen takes F3. Bishop D5. Both bishops lining up against your king. You've also got a knight in the attack. This rook can join the attack. This queen will join the attack. Queen e3, f4. Every single move, the last three to five moves, just been attack. f4, take. Or else black will just take and white's king side will totally crumble. Rook e8, another attacking move. Queen d3, knight takes f4. Another attacking move. What is it? Five attacking moves in a row? Absolutely incredible play from Richard Rapport. After this move, Schengelier resigned. There's no good square for the queen. If you play queen d2, I was just thinking a normal move like rook e2, then queen g6 check is going to be checkmate very soon. But the funny thing is, in this position, black has checkmate in one move. I'll give you three seconds. Can you find it? Knight h3 is mate. The king can't go in a corner due to this bishop. The king can't come here or here due to the queen. 
The funny thing is, if you move the queen, let's say, to c3, a normal move here is knight e2 check because it just wins the queen. But guess what? It's better than winning the queen. It wins the king. The knight forks the king and queen, but it's actually checkmate. The king can't go anywhere. A wonderful attacking victory from Richard Report. Bishop f5 has just been played by Schengelier. Black to move. What did Richard play? Richard played queen d7, getting out of the pin through a tactic. There's no time to do this because bishop takes f5, attacks the queen. After queen d7, Schengelier chose to retreat. It is possible to play this and then you go rook e6 and the game goes on. Queen f3 has just been played. How could you forget this? What brilliant move did black now play just to build, just to really start the attack? The move is rookie four. Final question. Let's see if you can remember how Richard just delivered the finish. The next few moves are all attacking moves. Can you calculate all the way until the end? Let's calculate this together. I'm going to draw in all the arrows and then play out the sequence. Bishop d5 attacking the queen. The queen now goes to e3. f4 attacking the queen. Take and another move to attack the queen, rook e8. The queen moves to d3, and one more attacking move. How do you attack the queen on d3? The knight, time to come into the party. Knight takes f4. With a knight on f4, you've got knight, bishop, bishop, rook, and a queen facing the attack, and there are no good defenders. Let's just play it out. Bishop d5, queen e3. f4, take. Rook e8. Queen d3, knight takes f4, game over. The cool thing is, if you play a move like queen d2, it's mating one. Knight h3. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you press the bell, then YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.